Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Lincoln on this Sunday morning. My name is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. Each week since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic last year, our congregation has gathered together at least twice. On Thursday night, when we tend to our community and each other directly on Zoom, and in this service on Sunday morning, broadcast on YouTube. And Sunday morning, whether in person or on YouTube, is a chance to proclaim who we are and what we're about, throwing open the doors of the congregation and proclaiming the radical love and welcome that is at the heart of our faith. The Unitarian Church of Lincoln, we say, aspires to be a loving community, uniting reason with spiritual exploration to transform ourselves and the world. And right now, in what we hope, what we believe are the closing months of this pandemic, we know that transformation is necessary, that we cannot go back to the world as it was. Arundhati Roy wrote at the start of this pandemic that historically pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This one is no different. It is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging all that we have, or we can walk through lightly, with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and to fight for it. What other world will we imagine? How will we bring it into being? Step lightly and with little luggage, beloveds, there is still much work to be done. It is a joy to gather together each Sunday in this space. And it's a particular joy this week to welcome my colleague, the Reverend Catherine Clarenbach to the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Reverend K Clarenbach is an ordained Unitarian Universalist minister, a third degree initiate into the Stone Circle tradition of Wicca, a spiritual companion, and the founder of the Way of the River. And it's probably worth saying that in addition to all of that, Catherine is a dear friend who has often been the voice of wisdom in my life. You may remember several years ago now that she gave the charge to the minister at my ordination. She brings a richness of experience and curiosity to her ministry that I have looked up to for years. So it is good to worship together. And let us begin. We light our chalices today and the one you see here as a reminder that each of us carries a single flame that is part of the great flame of divine understanding, creation, and healing. We like this chalice to remind us that the individual is universal, that everyone has a story to tell, and there is always someone, somewhere, who needs to hear your story, to see your light shining where they are lost in the dark. We light our chalices and this chalice as the spark of imagination, the light of inspiration that can bring a whole new world to birth. Our story today is called Embolk for the Youngest Witchling, and it's by Lisa Emerson. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful young maiden. She had long golden hair and soft blue eyes. Her name was the goddess. The goddess was special because like you and me, the goddess grew and changed with the passing of time. The goddess woke up in her bedroom and walked over to open the curtains. She pushed away the heavy velvet drapes and bright sunlight kissed her face. The goddess was very happy. She knew that the sun god had brought back the sun at Yule and now it was her turn to help the world on this very special day. Today was Imbolc. Today was the day that the goddess would send her love and light into all the animals, plants and trees and welcome spring again. 
The goddess tied her blue silk cloak around her and raised her hand. Her dearest friend and element, Air, responded and swirled around her with respect and reverence. Help me, Air, the goddess whispered softly. Help me make up the world. Air blew throughout the trees, shaking its leaves. It whipped past tiny bits of grass and dust and soared over rocks and down streams. The goddess took a deep breath and began to sing a soft melody as she walked into the forest. Wake up, wake up, wake up, little ones. It's time to play and dance in the sun. Slowly, the animals poked their sleepy little heads out into the sunlight. As the goddess was walking through the woods, she came upon a tiny plant. Staring at it, she was reminded of the beauty of rebirth after a long, harsh winter. Today is in bulk, she said, and this plant represents all fertility that I have to bear. Let us welcome new life once again to the earth. Let us warm ourselves in the sun and watch as new life is reborn again soon on Astara. The goddess cupped her hands around the tiny plant and sang softly. Wake up, little flower, let your petals unfold. We welcome the spring and get rid of the cold. The tiny flower burst into bloom and stretched its petals toward the sun. The goddess cleared old brush away from the tiny plant to make sure it would grow nice and strong. Brightest blessings, little plant, she said, and continued into the forest. Then, as the goddess stopped at the foot of a tree, she looked up and saw a tiny nest. She carefully climbed up the large tree and peeked over into the bird nest. A mother robin was huddled in her nest, curled up to protect from the cold. The robin saw the goddess and chirped happily. The goddess smiled and sang, wake up mother bird, it's almost time. Three babies you'll have, it will be sublime. The goddess raised her hand and whispered words of deep magic. The robin was blessed with the gift of new life and would bear three baby birds at Ostara. The robin bowed its tiny head to the goddess and chirped merrily. The goddess carefully climbed down the tree and smiled walking off into the woods. Soon after, goddess heard a rustling behind a nearby bush. She smiled slyly, knowing that the sun god had followed her. He was now a young boy with curly hair. He was a mischievous little child, but loved being out in the woods with all his animal friends. Come out, little one, the goddess called softly. The sun god leapt out from behind the bushes and ran over to curl up on the goddess's lap. Goddess, I saw you helping all the animals today, he said softly. The goddess nodded. Today is the day we will call Embolk. Today is the day new life has begun again. New buds have formed. Bird eggs will be laid in their tiny nests and seeds will be sown. All this is possible because of you, little sun god. The sun god looked at the goddess with wide eyes. Me, he said sheepishly. The goddess cradled the sun god in her arms and rocked him back and forth. As he began to doze into peaceful slumbers, she sang this lullaby. You saved them all, you brought back the sun. New life is formed, the animals can run. I love you more than words can say. Rest your head, little sun god, tomorrow's another day. And that is the end of our story today. Thank you. Welcome everyone. Today we have Lisandra Jorge here with El Centro de las Americas. We're so excited that El Centro is the recipient of our January 2021 Share the Plate. And welcome Lisandra. We're happy to have you. So tell us, what is your role at El Centro? Okay, hi Kelly. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> My role in El Centro is community health worker. Okay, great. And what is the mission of El Centro? The mission of El Centro, in my opinion, is to educate and be a support for our community. So El Centro is an organization who has 
the doors open to everyone who is looking for help in education, health. So we are very open to help everyone. So who exactly in the community do you serve normally? We normally serve the Hispanic communities, but as I said before, we are open to help everyone. What types of programs do you have? Right now, our center has many programs. We have physical activity, nutrition, breastfeeding program. We have citizenship classes, GED classes. Also, we have a domestic violence class, uh, classes or program. We are open to help in many areas out of those programs. For example, if somebody come looking for um, open a bank account, we can help with that. So tell me, what is the greatest challenge that your clients are facing right now? We have a lot of challenge, uh, but I think one of our big challenge right now is the COVID and the impact that the COVID had or, ha or, or is having in the economy. So we are receiving a lot of cases of families with, with not money for pay rent, food, utilities, and we are trying to get help for those families. Thanks God, we received some, uh, in the last year, we received some um, grants, but the demand is high. So <laughs> the grants not cover all the families that are needing help. Could you share one of your recent success stories? We have many uh, success stories, but one of the most recent story was on Christmas. Um, one of the mothers of my lactation group started the delivery. So I was helping her during the process in the hospital, trans doing translation and wow. everything. And yes, it was, was incredible. And after um, the baby born, uh, the mom sent us a beautiful message, a beautiful, a beautiful letter with the picture of the little baby. And she said that El Centro and our work was a Christmas gift from God. So it was incredible to receive uh, that message and very powerful word, words because that is what we do. I mean, and have the opportunity to serve in that way, it's, it's beautiful. So how can members and friends of the church help El Centro with your mission? I think uh, being in contact with us and offer, offering help in uh, the events that we have. Uh, sometimes we need volunteers, sometimes we need um, combined efforts with other organizations. So if they are open to help in any way or in any area, uh, no matter what, that will be a great support for our community. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time, Lisandra. I really appreciate it. And I hope that uh, the Unitarian Church will be able to raise some funds to help you get through the rest of this pandemic. <laughs> No, thank you to all of you guys for this course and for uh, have El Centro in mind. It's, it's a great support for us. Thank you so much. Thank you to Lisandra and the whole staff of El Centro de las Americas for the invaluable work that they do in our community. To donate to El Centro, you can send a physical check to 6300 A Street with Share the Plate or El Centro in the memo line. You can give online through our Realm website, or you can text UC Lincoln and the amount you wish to give to 73256. That's UC Lincoln and the amount you wish to give to 73256. Thank you for your generosity.
The goddess Breed was known by many names. In parts of Northern Britain, she was called Brigantia and was seen as the keeper of the forge. Although as Brigantia, she is not nearly as famous as her Breed aspect. She is seen as the goddess who bestowed the title of Brigantis upon a pan-Celtic clan in England's northern border region. Here is Patty's prayer. Hail Brigantia, keeper of the forge, she who shapes the world itself with fire, she who ignites the spark of passion within the poet she who leads the clans with a warrior's cry. She who is the bride of the islands and who leads the fight of freedom. Hail Brigantia, defender of kin and of hearth. She who inspires the bards to sing, who drives the smith to raise his hammer. She who is a fire sweeping across the land. Each week, we set aside time in our worship service to mark the joys and sorrows of our lives. Will you join me in meditating on these words from the Reverend Sarah LeBall? Spirit of life and love, holy mystery, how do we pray for hope? How do we bow down or look up or sit in silence or walk among the trees to make hope come alive when it feels so far beyond our grasp? We breathe, we look within, we listen, we reach out. We hold in the depths of our heart that knowing that hope is a gift we cannot destroy. It is the heartbeat always stirring within us. It is the imagination awakening us to possibility. It is the unfolding of faith in action. May we hold on to hope and carry it for one another and for this broken and hurting world. May we be vessels of comfort and compassion. May we be vessels of peace and justice. May we be vessels of hope and healing. May love prevail. In the name of all that is holy, we pray. Amen. As this next song plays, you're invited to type your name or the name of someone you are carrying in joy or sorrow this week into the chat box. Thank you for your presence. Who we are 
Spirit of God, we are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are mothers of life and the builders of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers and we are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters dust and the sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builders of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers and we Our second reading is the invocation to Briad on the occasion of the ordination of Reverend Molly Brewer. Exalted one, Briad, be with us here and now in this time of our celebration, our time of need. You inspire the heart and move the pen. You heal with wisdom. You hammer and temper at the star forge. You wield the spear of justice with both skill and force. And two, you bring peace and reconciliation. Be with us here in our time of celebration, our time of need. Breed who overturns the unjust judgment, make us unafraid in the face of unjust law. Breed who outsmarts and defies the wiles of despots, make us creative, make us clever. Breed who blesses both the home and the homeless, keep our hearts open to others. And Briad, who cares most for those with the smallest space, the fewest rights, the least privilege, give us courage never to turn away from suffering. Gentle Briad, lay your mantle over us. Wise Briad, teach us your healing arts. Demanding Briad, wake us from sleep into a bright day of inspiration. Fierce Briad, forge us into your spear of justice, thrown straight into the heart of tyranny, cast true in defense of the oppressed. Exalted one, great Briad, Shape us with your tools and lend us those tools at need by earth and sky and sea. We offer you hail and welcome.
Hello friends, and thank you so much for having me here today to share this service with you from my home in Portland, Oregon. And thanks especially to Reverend Oscar, my seminary classmate and dear friend. And happy Imbolc Eve, happy observance of the tiniest of spring's tendrils and days sacred to the Celtic goddess and saint, Briad. Briad means exalted one. And she is one of the most enduring and powerful expressions of the Celtic imagination. The Celts looked back and found someone from their own past, someone who can help us as we long for a world in the future, marked by justice, care, and peace. So let us begin this Imbolc Eve with some thoughts about how the imagination of the past, that is to say myth, can help us live into a better world, which is to say our dreams. First and foremost, Today, I continue the theme of imagination and particularly the idea that just because something is imaginary doesn't mean it's not real. I'll give us all a moment to parse that double negative and say it like this instead. Imaginary things may be just as real as any other things. Democracy, nation states, the American dream, mythic figures, the additional dignity and even worth afforded political figures, doctors, lawyers, ministers. All these things are imaginary and yet they have real consequences in the real world. Of course, many religious and spiritual states are both imaginary and real. Even science is imaginary and real. Without imagination, no experiment could go forward. Without being able to think of what might be and a world improved by that imaginative moment, there would be no cancer treatments, no antibiotics, no hybrid roses for heaven's sake. Imagination allows us to enter new realities. Of course, some imaginative visions are more appealing to me than others are. Groups like the Proud Boys, who attacked protesters here in Portland and were among the insurrectionists who stormed the national capital. Well, they have imagination too. They try to conjure a world very different from the one I long for. And yet their imagination is a very real part of our national identity. So what other kinds of imaginative and real methods do we use to build the world that we as Unitarian Universalists, religious progressives dream about? And what can we learn from historical and current imaginings? Jungians say, that if dreams are the myths of our subconscious, then myths are the dreams of cultures. And the cultures that make up my heritage certainly did a lot of dreaming, as I'm certain yours did too. My ethnicity comes largely from the British Isles with a bit of German thrown in for some mainland good measure. But Scottish, English, and Irish heritage dominate my, ancestors, my ancestry 
and the imagination that comes with it. Just as in our shared life now, my ancestors imagined ways toward the world in which they hoped to live. And some of those ancestors used their own unique and yet universal divine spark to imagine a particular way forward that would give a voice to those in poverty, that would protect women and children, bring an end to the ravages of winter each year, ensure the safety of precious cows, goats, and sheep, show women in positions of strength, and emphasize the importance of justice, equity, and peace. Enter Brieg, whose name or title means exalted one, and who both in her role as a goddess and a very early Irish saint shows up all over Celtic Europe from the British Isles to the continent. Breed, Breed, Brigantia, or Saint Bridget, she is the distillation of centuries of looking for a better future, caught in the net of the past. In fact, it is in looking back from the 10th century when we get the first glimpses of the woman within the Roman church claimed as a saint. It's also in those 10th century manuscripts that we begin to see St. Bridget's history begin to weave together with that of a goddess. Her hagiography or saint's history is peculiar to say the least, even if you stick pretty closely to Catholic ideas of the fifth century saint. For example, she was afforded the power of an archbishop, and she chose the bishops of the area around Kildare, in County Kildare, the province of Leicester, in Ireland. Go just a little farther afield, and you'll learn that some tales tell that those bishops she chose were goldsmiths. In many Catholic images of her, she is wearing the garb of a nun, but carrying a crozier, the stylized shepherd's crook that is the mark of Episcopal, that is a bishop's power. The fifth century St. Bridget founded the famous double monastery in Kildare, Ireland, one side for men and one for women. She chose the Bishop Abbot, who was the major superior of the men's side of the monastery. And for generations, the abbess at Kildare was the superior general of the monasteries of Ireland. In some of the imaginative reality of Breed, we find her a triple goddess. In early Christian legends of the goddess of the past, she is said to have had two sisters, also named Breed. One sister brought healing and wisdom. The other was revered by bards and poets for her gift of inspiration, that expression of imagination itself. And the last sister, the last sister was a blacksmith, one with the strength and skill to shape metal, a goddess of both the fire and water necessary to shape and temper metal, and images of her as both a goddess and a saint may show her holding a bowl of flame. Those flames are essential 
to understanding Briad in any of the ways she appears. In fact, according to the Sisters of Solus Breed, Contemplative Center and Hermitage, a sacred fire burned in Kildare, reaching back into pre-Christian times. Scholars suggest that priestesses used to gather on the hill of Kildare. Remember that Briad's title means exalted one. So the priestesses gathered to tend their ritual fires while invoking a goddess named Briad to protect their herds and provide a fruitful harvest. When St. Bridget built her monastery and church in Kildare, she continued the custom of keeping a fire alight, a perpetual flame. For her and her nuns, that fire represented the new light of Christianity. Although it had been lit many years before the fifth century and the arrival of Christianity on Ireland's shores. Jared of Wales, a Welsh chronicler, visited Kildare in the 12th century, and he reported that the fire of St. Briad was still burning in Kildare, still tended by the nuns of St. Bridget. Some historians record that a few attempts were made to have the fire extinguished, but without success. And it may have survived all the way up to the suppression of the monasteries in the 16th century. In contemporary polytheist paganism, Breed is most often revered in the guise of the triple goddess of healing, inspiration, and smithcraft. Practitioners, dreamers, imaginers, if you will, call upon her, or is it them, for inspiration to write and sing, for wisdom to heal the world and for the will to bear the spear, even to be the spear of justice. Devotees of Bridget lay ourselves upon her anvil as one might on one of her high holy places and ask to be shaped into what is needful for our times, just as she responded to the needs of her time. As we look back toward these ancient stories, I believe we can use them to imagine how we may move forward toward the dream we dream, the world we dream about. According to a 10th century account, Briad was revered as one of the original deities of Ireland, sister of the judge Angus, whom she succeeded as a judge. And it is in the justice stories, some from Wales and some from Ireland, that we learn about Briad not only as the giver of healing, inspiration, or smithing, but Briad the just judge. As the judge, Briad concerns herself particularly with women, children, and the laws protecting them, livestock, and those living at the edges of society. Until a precedent she set by which some women could own their property, there was no provision in Irish law for lay women to do so, not even widows. But Breed intervened, changing the course of Irish law. Or Irish law changed as the result of looking back on the saint and goddess the people had revered. Nevertheless, 
No matter how the early first millennium goddess or the mid first millennium saint is understood, we can learn from her examples and admonitions. As we consider the family separations that have been going on since 2017, including the separation of unweaned infants from their mothers, we can think on what Briad might do, might say, how she might respond given what we know about her stories. Turning to Briad for inspiration in her role as protector of women and children, and especially in her role as the foster mother of Jesus. Well, let me digress for just a second. More than in any other role, Bridget's role as the foster mother of Jesus is the one on which she is called or for which she is called in Ireland to this day, the foster mother of Jesus. First century, fifth century, 10th century, apparently time is not needed in this discussion. But we can talk about the past, the present and the future at least. And when it comes to family separation, we're talking about the present. We're talking about the present. And we should think about what Briad admonishes us to do as the great foster mother she is. What would she think of keeping children in cages as a disincentive for refugees to cross our borders? What would Briad do about infants and toddlers left in filth for hours at a time? Further, what about those infants and toddlers who cannot be united with their families because they cannot say who their families are? The records are sketchy in some places and those children cannot tell you where their parents have gone or who they are. What would Briad say about the young Latina and Chicana girls desperate for beauty, for beauty, who tear their own clothes in captivity to make folded fabric flowers to wear in their hair? Yes, I suppose I'm just saying, what would Briad do? And so, by extension, what might we do now and in the future? How does the imaginative power of myth shift our perspective in the present to help us imagine the future that we're longing to live into? Not a future decided by people with more power than we have. Not a future decided by people with more wealth. Not a future decided by those who simply don't care how other people are treated. But the world that we long for, the world that we dream about, there are countless examples in culture after culture after culture of the way that myth can inspire us, can help us imagine a new world. And as Adrienne Marie Brown says, if we can't imagine a new way of living, a new reality, then it's not going to happen. We have to be able to imagine it. We have to be able to imagine it, to have a sense of it, a vision, some clarity. So I'll just share a few more examples from the storehouse of Celtic myth 
about Briad and what she has to do with this world that I think we can envision. Briad was known as the Brig of the Cowless. That's C-O-W-L-E-S as in Sam, S as in Sam, Cowless. Not because the abbess priestess deity was herself ever seen as poor, or even that holy poverty was an unusually rigorous discipline of Briad and her sisters. She is Brig the Cowless or Brig of the Cowless because the decisions she handed down in her role as judge and abbess consistently supported care for the poor. Similarly, she is Brig the Hostler, H-O-S as in Sam, T-L-E-R, Hostler. Not only because of the Abbey's willingness to offer shelter to travelers, but also because Briad encouraged the wealthiest members of the community, often those who benefited from the livestock she protected, to shelter those without homes in Kildare as well. As we consider issues like stimulus checks and who get them and how much they are, unemployment, evictions, protest tent cities and boarded up small businesses, Briad the Cowless and Briad the Hustler can help us as we struggle with our own choices, our own moral tensions, behavior and advocacy. Despite her acknowledgement of the difficulties in the Celtic world, the even armed conflict among the Celtic clans, Briad is also known as the peacemaker. And this title harkens to her role as judge, wisdom keeper, and abbess. And the peacemaker is a face, uh, an image of Briad that is particularly important to those modern day sisters at Solus Breed. Again, from their website. Feuds between clans were commonplace in Briad's day. She is often referred to as a peacemaker who intervened in disputes between rival factions and brought healing and reconciliation. Breed is even depicted in an icon in the parish church in Kildare with her foot on a sword. And she challenges us to be peacemakers and peacekeepers, end quote. Who suffers most when war descends upon a community? Who benefits most? Who needs our protection the most? These, I think, are questions that Briad answers. And when it comes to answers, I bring you finally Briad the healer, the one who blesses the hearth and the boiling pot of healing herbs. And in one of her miracle stories, she is said to have caused a nun who had become pregnant to be no more with child. Does that make Bridget the matron saint of women's healthcare? I think maybe so. As the healer, she oversees all healthcare. Breed at the bedside, breed in the OR, Briad working to get protective gear, respirators, and oxygen to those who need them. Briad in the parking lot offering vaccination. 
The coronaviruses are ravaging communities across the country, as you know all too well. So, according to the New York Times, Nebraska's daily infections have gone from 2,812 in late November to 686 earlier this week. And thank goodness, we know how vigilant we must be for our families, our communities, and ourselves. For the sick, the dying, the grieving, and all of us who are so affected by COVID. How can we support one another now? And if we're at a loss for what to do or how to begin, we can ask one another and we can turn to Briet or even to St. Bridget for inspiration as well as healing wisdom. I leave you then with this admonition. Do not be quick to dismiss the stories, understandings, and imagination of the past, even the very deep past. Our forebears understood things we have forgotten, as we know many things that they did not. Together, we can build the world we dream about now, perhaps inspired by the bardic wisdom and the Celtic imagination of Briad, both goddess and saint.
As in all things in the household of earth, we embrace for a while and then let go. So for now, from this time and this place, across various times and places, let us go from this worship inspired to heal, to help, to create, all from the deep places of imagination. Go in peace and return in love. Blessed be.